Nature is a realm brimming with phenomena that surpass our wildest imaginations. One example of this is the astonishing switch in roles from the hunter to hunted, scientifically termed as role reversal between predator and prey. Typically, these occurrences are observed in situations where the prey, like a bullfrog, is larger than the predator or in similar circumstances. However, there are cases that defy this conventional wisdom. One of these examples is the Epomis beetle, known for eating frogs several times its size. As an adult, the Epomis nigricans measures just 2 centimeters. Yet, its hunting targets are amphibians like frogs and toads, many times its own size. Currently, only three species within the Epomis genus, including this one and this one, are known to feed on amphibians from their larval stage, and their hunting process can be quite brutal. The Epomis larvae wiggle their antenna attached to their heads to lure in frogs, and the frogs, deceived by this movement, leap at the larvae intending to eat them. This is when the tragedy begins. The moment a frog leaps, the Epomis larva bites it with its hook-like jaws, gripping the frog's tongue or jaw. Sometimes they stealthily approach from behind and bite the frog's legs. Because of their incredibly strong biting force, the Epomis larva rarely detach from the frog, even if it flails or hops vigorously, unless something unusual happens. Once firmly attached to the frog, the Epomis larva secrete digestive enzymes to dissolve the frog's skin, then suck its bodily fluids and tear its flesh, savoring their meal. This process continues until the frog is unrecognizable. They are known as amphibian killers, which is fitting given their hunting success rate reaches an astonishing 98%. Dr. Gil Wisen, a zoologist researching Epomis, remarks that these larvae resemble parasites more than predators when they are just born. Newly attached Epomis larvae typically feed on the frog's bodily fluids for about four days before detaching. As the Epomis larvae grow into their second and third instars, this parasitic behavior gradually transforms into predatory actions. As shown in the footage, Epomis larvae, about three weeks old, not only lure with their antenna, but also show boldness by slowly approaching from behind the frog and fiercely biting its hind legs. And this style of hunting continues even after they mature into adults. After mastering the attack on the frog's legs, the Epomis larvae chew through the frog's muscle, immobilizing it, and then slowly savor their dinner. Of course, such dining opportunities are not always available. Dr. Gil Wisen explains, Epomis beetles have few chances to encounter frogs and can starve to death if they don't eat for six days. Once they succeed in hunting, they eat until their bellies are full, even to the point where their back wings open. But here is a question that might arise. What if the frog swallows the larva? Wouldn't that end the battle? To this, Dr. Gil Wisen answers no. This is footage from an experiment conducted by Dr. Wisen in 2011. You can see a toad that swallowed an Epomis larva spitting it out two hours later. This happens because the Epomis larva secretes enzymes inside the toad's stomach that dissolve the surrounding skin. And once out of the toad's belly, the Epomis larva immediately bites the toad's jaw and begins its hunt. Isn't that persistent? Another question arises here. Why haven't frogs evolved to avoid Epomis larvae? Even if being stealthily approached from behind is inevitable, surely there could have been an evolutionary path to resist being lured in by the antenna. According to Dr. Wisen's experiments, frogs are consistently deceived by the larva's antenna. For instance, fireflies possess a toxin called Lusobufagen, Predators in the wild, like bats, know well from dreadful experiences that the light emitted by fireflies is a warning signal, leading them to exclude fireflies from their diet. They have evolved strategies to avoid toxicity. On the other hand, Dr. Gil Wisen suggests that the reason amphibians lack such avoidance mechanisms 
is because the hunting success rate of Epomus beetles, or larvae, is extraordinarily high. As mentioned earlier, about 98% of frogs or toads bitten by them end up dying, leaving no opportunity for learning. Furthermore, Dr. Wisen notes that amphibians have such a strong tendency to recognize smaller moving objects as prey that this powerful adaptive behavior often overrides any avoidance response. He also hypothesizes that Epomus became an amphibian killer as a result of evolving defensive behaviors for survival. It was initially a defensive tactic, but it's said that this defensive mechanism evolved so drastically that it eventually turned into a behavior where they use frogs as prey. These complete role reversals, where the predator becomes the main food of the prey, are extremely rare in nature and become a hot topic in the academic world when observed. In 2011, Dr. Shinya Oba from Kyoto University observed a particular water bug, Kerkaldaia de Roli, in Japan hunting and eating turtles. As you can see, despite being an insect, it was confirmed that this bug also eats snakes, which became a topic of discussion in various media at the time. Then, in 1988, there was an issue with the rapid increase in the population of sea snail on Marcus Island, located in South Africa, disrupting the ecosystem balance. The snail's predator, the lobster, had disappeared. To address this, Dr. Christopher McQuaid, a marine biologist from the University of Cape Town, South Africa, at the time suggested a quick solution and conducted an experiment. To reduce the indiscriminately growing population of sea snails, he brought about 1,000 lobsters of the same predatory species from a nearby island, about 4 kilometers away, and released them. However, the result was disastrous. Contrary to expectations that the lobsters would eat the snails, as seen in this photo, many snails surrounded and ate the lobsters, resulting in the death of all the released lobsters within a week. It may be hard to grasp just how astonishing this phenomenon is, but to give an extreme example, it's akin to releasing wolves into the forest to control rapidly breeding elks that are indiscriminately eating grass, only to have the elks attack and in some cases, prey upon the wolves. In this way, there are no eternal victors or perpetual victims in nature. There are only fierce battles for survival. And sometimes, the intensity of these battles brings us both surprise and awe. Science is a window to the world. And this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.